Hello, my name is Lewis, and today I'm going to be talking about unlocking more ways to use Range Base 4. Now, Range Base 4 is great. It allows us to cut down on boilerplate. We cut down the number of mistakes. It's easy to read, and it works with all sorts of containers. But there's a few things it can't do by itself. Um, it can't tell you what number you're on, or what element you're on in the in, um, when you're iterating. It won't return just the keys or just the values when you're iterating over a map. Um, it doesn't work when you already have a begin and end pointer and you just want to iterate. It doesn't work if you have like a size, or sorry, you have a begin pointer and then a size. Or maybe you need to get access to the iterator. It's trying to hide that from you. What can we do? Well, let's look at enumerate, because enumerate's fun. Python's got enumerate. It's really very convenient. You get a list, you put a enumerate around it. When you walk over it, you get both the index and the value. Can we do that in C++? Well, let's try it. So if we, here's our, uh, range base for a loop. We have our structure decomposition there. We have our list with enumerate around it. And yeah, if we can make this enumerate work, we'll have our list. So first of all, to make this work, let's see, let's go over range base four, right? When you do a range base four, the compiler does this bit of code. So the things that are important is if we can get a begin function, an end function, a not equals, a plus plus, and dereference, then we can make it do whatever we want. So let's do enumerate. The first thing we have, we're going, to we're going to be templated over the range that we're looking at. I'm going to skip that part. Um, we need to know the actual iterator type. We can use decal type to get the iterator type. We're going to need some sort of iterator that we can use. So um, we'll create a new one that will have the counter and the original iterator in it. We'll initialize it on increment. We'll increment both the original iterator and the counter. Um, when we compare for if we were at the end, we only want to check the iterator and not the counter. <coughs> Then we will return on to reference the counter and the iterator. Now that we've got that iterator, we need to return. We need an object that we can use to return it. So we'll create this our enumerate object that's going to just return those two, uh, return the iterators for us. So we'll get the first, the, we get the begin and the end, just like we usually do from the original range. And we'll have two functions that return those two iterators: the begin, which is going to return our new pseudo iterator, and the end. Um, which is going to return the original end. Now, in C++11, you had to return the same thing. So we could return a pseudo iterator for the end. We just have to ignore the counter. Other than that, this stuff all works in C++11. And finally, what's this last bit? Well, let's hop back a second. So generally speaking, or at least it used to be, that you can't type deduce uh, in a constructor. And what we had looks a lot like a constructor. But the standard way to get around that is to use a function that returns the thing. So we can type deduce in the function. So create a function called enumerate, which will do the type deduction. And then we'll return the object that we actually wanted to with all nice perfect forwarding and all that kind of stuff. So we run it. And well, it almost worked. Um, anyone know the problem? The problem is we have a great little foot gun here, which is that the uh, range base 4 will preserve the lifetime of the thing that we directly pass into it, but any temporaries that were used during the construction, whether they're passed in or chained together, those will be lost before we actually start iterating. So we'll lose our list before we actually start iterating. Also, um, brace initializers can't be type deduced in a template, but we can fix that. So uh, if we pull the initializer list out, and this is what you usually see, is just you're usually not iterating over a, a list immediately, but something that was passed in, and it works, it works great. So what else can we do? Well, another thing that happens sometimes is you got the begin and the end, and you'd really like to iterate over without over all the you know boilerplate. So can we do that? Well, in this case, really the only part we need is the holder for the begin and the end that actually returns those. So we do that. We create an object, holds them, return that object. It works. What if we have um, we're like you know we have a begin and a size? Maybe something's coming from C. It's older code. These things happen. Okay, so. We have almost exactly the same code. We have the begin, and the, for the end, we just need to add size to the data, and that works. So what if we want to iterate over the keys? Well, it's almost exactly the same as the first one, except for the dereference returns iter first. And if we want to see the values, we return iter second. And notice it's much easier to read. You know, we're going to iterate over the values than you know, iter mm, something, second, whatever. So what if you need to access the iterator? I had a case where I had a very special, specially written linked list class, and um, it would behave really well with iterate, except I, I needed to get to the iterator so I could delete the stupid thing. So, you know, we do the same thing, except um, when we return uh, the pseudo iterator, we return the iterator itself, and that works. So now, iterator can do all these, uh, excuse me, <coughs> range base 4 can do all these things we wanted to do, so it's even better.